regioner. For at imødekomme den offentlige panik, som bredte sig over denne epidemi af sindssygdom, samlede USA's nationale sundhedsinstitutter en forening, der bliver betalt af regeringen, et panel bestående af fremstående læger og psykiater, der skulle forklare nøjagtigt, hvad ADHD var. I would like uh, any member of the panel to describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology. Mark, would you like to, since you see them in your practice? There, I mean, I think the panel has been frank, and you know the difficulties here are immense in terms of of uh, um, these. I mean, <coughs> ah, it is hard. It, it, it's very hard to know how to answer this question. There, um, they cannot. You know, even when. Um, uh, They are as if driven by a motor. There are some good clinical descriptions. Um, and I think, you know, we, uh, I, I do, I think the part of the problem is the profession keeps changing the diagnosis. At this time, we do not have a diagnostic test for ADHD. Therefore, the validity of the disorder continues to be a problem. Men denne chokerende indrømmelse stoppede ikke psykiaterne. To år senere var antallet af amerikanske skolebørn med ADHD blevet til 6 millioner. I dag er 20 millioner børn over hele verden blevet stemplet med en eller anden form for indlæringsforstyrrelse. We would sit behind um, a two-way mirror um, w along with the parents. We would then look at um, the child. We would like do small manipulative activities with them to see where their deficit was. Um, it was wrong what we were doing. We were looking at a five-minute glimpse of this child's life and saying, "Okay, here you go. Here's a little pill. Take it. You'll be fine." These small pills, som Ritalin, Adderall og Concerta, er USA's Drug Enforcement Administration blevet betegnet som højt vandende i samme kategori som kokain og metamfetamin. When I was on the Ritalin, it made me just feel like totally different, like I wasn't even who I was. I was, you know, flipping out, was twitching, you know, going crazy. I felt like I was out of it all the time, like I wasn't there, I wasn't human. You're just a zombie, pretty much not, you, you, you know, you do what you can just to get by and just don't do anything extra. My mother never teased me, but she thought I really had ADHD and I was wrong. I had something wrong with me. So I thought she'd feel bad and feel sorry for me if I died. But then again, I I thought that she um, would miss me a lot and I also love her um, a little more than I wanted to kill myself. And so I stopped, I stopped when I realized that. Det store udbud af receptpligtig medicin skabte en ny måde for børn at skabe penge på. At sælge deres medicin til deres skolekammerater. It's called Kitty Cocaine. They take the Ritalin and they just repackage it and they sell it on campus to the kids. Because it's like speed. I figured like if I was going to do drugs, I might as well make it worth it. And I ended up doing street drugs and then I ended up getting into it really bad. We're looking at um, marijuana and other things as being gateway drugs and actually the the so-called medications are a greater gateway drug. The Ritalin drugs are backfiring big time because if the child is already disruptive and he takes cocaine, he's going to be a lot more disruptive after he's taken it. It is not going to calm him down. Boom! She got on the drugs and her personality changed, her behaviors changed, it became erratic and dark and violent and uh, it, it was just a nightmare. He kept having adverse reactions, becoming very, very angry. He could not control his behavior, he couldn't control his temper. He was on five different psych meds, Prozac and um, lithium and um, he was seven years old and he was unable to function. He would have rages and then crying and and all kinds of um, just violent rages, grabbing knives and all of this. 
The list includes 15-year-old Kip Kinkle withdrawing from Prozac when he shot 22 classmates, killing two after murdering his mother and stepfather at his home in Springfield, Oregon. 18-year-old Jason Hoffman on Effexor and Selexa when he opened fire at his California high school, wounding five. 15-year-old Sean Cooper on a mix of antidepressants when he shot students in Idaho. And 17-year-old Eric Harris on Luvox when he and partner Dylan Klebold killed 12 classmates and a teacher in the bloodiest school massacre yet, Columbine. Alt dette overskygger den egentlige grund til, at børn begyndte i skolen for at få en uddannelse. Siden 1970 er USA's internationale placering med hensyn til akademisk uddannelse faldet fra en 9. plads til en 28. plads. Mens antallet af børn, der blev diagnostiseret med indlæringsforstyrrelse i samme overrække, er skudt til vejr, og salget af ADHD-medicin nu er 32 gange større, end det var dengang. Children don't ask for psychiatric drugs. Children don't ask to be diagnosed. They don't want to be called crazy. So you ask to ask the classic Roman question, legal question, cui bono, who benefits? The people who make the diagnosis. Det sker på en eller anden måde en, øh, en spiritualisering af samfundet. Ja. Mange steder, der er snart op, der har været en stor debat om det her med intelligent design og sådan noget. Hvor, hvor placerer øh, din organisation så i den her strøm her, at man er mere spiritualitet ind i, i videnskaben? Eller, øh, det. Medborgernes vanskommission er, er, er kun det, den er en humanitær organisation, der giver menneskerettigheder til psykisk syge. Det er politik. Det er bare en, 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 uh, en informationscentral for psykiatriske overgreb. Og det er klart, når der er psykiatriske overgreb, jamen så er der også en organisation, der ligesom skal sende dem op og kommunikere dem ud, sådan at vi kan forbedre verden.